Hello everyone, welcome to AgileCast, a podcast for the Agile community from the community of ZACT. ZACT is a grouping of passionate Agilists who live, breathe and talk Agile. One of our core values is sharing of knowledge, which we do with passion, adding it back to the community. We organize the biggest Agile meetup in North India, known as Agile NCR, and we publish a lot of blogs, white papers, we present papers in conferences. Of lately, we fell in love with the format of podcasts and decided to come up with an Agile cast. In this series, we'll be picking up trending topics and pertinent questions related to the world of Agile and product development and sharing our experiences here. Agile cast is an attempt to strengthen and enrich the community and try making Agile exact science driven by passion. I am Raj, a principal consultant for Agile Transformations with Zebia Agile Consulting and Training Group. We are a group of Agile coaches, Scrum Masters and Product Owners who come with varied experience, rich expertise from the field and this series we are going to share our experiences and knowledge back to the community. In our Agile Cast podcast series, my colleague and friend Kalyanaraman Dandapani presented the first episode where he spoke about communities of practice. In this second episode, I am going to talk about how Scrum can be used for infrastructure projects. If you are aware of Agile in software world, most likely you would be knowing about Scrum and Kanban. Most organizations and individuals have perceptions either from their own experiences or from numerous sources the internet has that Scrum is useful for development projects only while Kanban is useful for production support and infrastructure projects. My dear listeners, in this podcast, I am going to share my own experience of using Scrum with infrastructure teams as part of an organizational transformation. Yes, you heard it right. Scrum can be used for infrastructure projects. And let me walk through how it was done. This podcast is divided into three parts. In part one, I'm going to give a brief overview of Scrum and Kanban. In part two, we look at how infrastructure teams work and few challenges of introducing Scrum. In part three, I'll be sharing my real-time experience of using Scrum with an infrastructure team. So, sit back, relax, listen and enjoy this podcast. Let's go. So, let's begin with Scrum overview. Scrum is a framework for complex product development iteratively and incrementally with just three roles, five events and three artifacts. Scrum is simple to follow. Scrum works on empiricism which asserts that knowledge comes from experience and making decisions on what is known. Empiricism has three pillars. Transparency, that is everyone having a same understanding. Inspection, frequently observing what is going on. And adaptation, taking corrective actions when there are deviations. The three roles in Scrum are 1. Product owner who maximizes the value of the product. 2. Scrum master, a servant leader accountable for Scrum process and facilitates scrum events as requested or needed. The third role is development team, a small team self-organizing with no titles, which is accountable as whole for producing a releasable done increment in each sprint. Please remember this releasable done increment because we will be talking about this later. Now let's move on to the five events. One, sprint is a container in which all other events takes place with a time box of one month or less. Two, sprint planning. A sprint begins with it. It has two parts. In part one, the scrum team collaborates what can be done in the sprint and arrives at a sprint goal. And in second part, the development team arrives at how the chosen work gets done. They create a sprint backlog with selected backlog items and a plan to deliver it. The next event is daily scrum. During the sprint every day for about 
a maximum of 15 minutes, the development team members inspect their progress towards sprint goal and plan the upcoming work for next 24 hours. The fourth event is sprint review. Towards the end of the sprint, the entire scrum team along with stakeholders invited by the product owner inspect the increment and decide what is the next best things to do to optimize value. Finally, the fifth event is sprint retrospective. The scrum team reviews its performance in sprint and arrives at how they can improve further. The three artifacts are number one product backlog, a single source of requirements that's dynamic in nature. Number two, sprint backlog created for each sprint by the development team containing the selected backlog items and a plan to deliver them. The third artifact is increment, the completed backlog items in the sprint that meet the team's definition of done and integrated with increments of all previous sprints. Aha! Let me speak about Kanban. The Kanban method is a means to design, manage and improve flow systems for knowledge work. The method also allows organizations to start with their existing workflow and drive evolutionary change. They can do this by visualizing their flow of work, limiting work in progress also known as WIP and stop starting and start finishing. Kanban can be used for any knowledge work setting and is particularly applicable in situations where work arrives in unpredictable fashion and or when you want to deploy work as soon as it is ready rather than waiting for other items. Remember, this could be one of the per reason for the perceptions where people think that Kanban is better suited for infrastructure work because in infrastructure work, we don't know where the work is going to come. Mostly, the teams will be working on unplanned work. Kanban has got few values like transparency, balance, coordination, customer focus, flow, leadership, understanding, agreement and respect. And Kanban works on few principles based on change management like start with what you do now, agree to pursue improvement through evolutionary change, encouraging act of leadership at every level and few service delivery principles. Few practices in Kanban which are very useful are visualizing, number two, limiting work in progress, number three, managing the flow, number four, making policies explicit, number five, implementing feedback loops, number six, improve collaboratively and evolve experimentally. This is a brief overview of Kanban. Good. Infrastructure teams are teams that work on IT infrastructure management, maintenance and support. For example, database management, server administration, teams can be called as infrastructure teams. These teams primarily have two categories of work. Category 1, planned work. Here, they carry out planned work such as backup, upgrade, tuning the system, doing periodic health checks, supporting development teams on release and deployments, etc. The category 2 kind of work is unplanned work. Here, they respond to incidents, complaints raised by the consumers of these infrastructure services. They also act on ad hoc requests received from development teams such as creation and provision of a server, request for opening a particular network port, bouncing a production server, etc. So after knowing a bit about infra teams, let us see the top three challenges we may face when an infra team adapts Scrum. Challenge one. Most of infra team's work is unplanned. We don't know when incidents will occur, tickets will be raised, requests will come from users. We will not be able to plan this kind of work in a sprint. This is a fair point. Let's look at how to address this. During sprint planning, teams can arrive at the amount of time spent on unplanned work by analyzing trends of incidents, requests, etc. for the last 2-3 months. This will give the team an idea about how much capacity probably they can allocate within the sprint to handle this type of work. 
sprint by sprint, the team can review this capacity, inspect and adapt as necessary. The remaining capacity can be used for value delivery activities. One advantage of this approach is, when the unplanned work is analyzed, self-organizing empowered scrum teams can retrospect how they can reduce the incidents, serve their customers better. This may lead to uncovering some development work, such as developing a self-service application, etc. If the teams doesn't have such data, what if it's a new team? Well, valid question, but still that's not an issue. In the first sprint <coughs> for a new team, we dedicate some capacity for unplanned work. We inspect and adapt as we progress. In the sprint retrospective, we see what was the allocated capacity, was it meeting the requirements, was it serving the needs or do we need to reduce it or increase it. Scrum is all about empiricism as I told you earlier. So it gives you enough opportunities for you to inspect and adapt. So there is no need to worry. Challenge 2 As an infrastructure team, most of our skills are concentrated on one or two areas. For example, a server admin team will have necessary skills on server administration while we adapt Scrum. If we get into some development work, we may have lack of other skills and there will be dependencies with other teams. How are we going to address this? Well, this is a practical situation which most dedicated infrastructure teams face. It's not new. By definition, a scrum team is cross-functional as a whole. As a whole, right? What does it mean? The whole team has necessary skills. In our case here, we may not have necessary skills within the team to meet all the things. So this type of team formation in scrum can be called as a component team. So these component teams have to collaborate with other teams on dependencies. And scrum gives you a beautiful mechanism called as Scrum of Scrums, a collaborative event where the teams self-organize, when to do the event, who will participate and they collaborate on minimizing the dependencies, getting the work done with respect to other teams. On top of this, they can also make this transparent by creating necessary backlog items, tracking dependencies and when they encounter any impediments seeking support and help from scrum master and other management layers above the scrum team. If the teams adopt DevOps practices, most of these component teams will blend with development teams where we may not face such an issue at all. So why worry about this? Challenge 3 Scrum requires a releasable done increment in each sprint as you to remember that earlier, right? How come an infra team meet at this criteria? Increment typically requires some development work. We don't work on the concept of increment and we may not have such work in each sprint. We are not doing Scrum. Excellent question. When an infra team thinks from a traditional mindset of tasks, keeping systems up and running, doing regular support and maintenance work, the concept of increment is difficult to follow and enact. This is where a mindset shift from support and maintenance to delivering value by having a stable, reliable, secure infrastructure platforms is required. I want you to think about the situation. A development team delivers value when their increment is released. But for an infrastructure team, when a critical server or service is down, users are not able to use the system, there is no value delivery. Bigger impact, more problem. This thought should trigger a paradigm shift in the thought process of an infra team by raising these questions to themselves. What can we do to ensure value delivery is not disrupted? How can we keep our scheduled downtimes to a minimum? causing as least disruption as possible. A self-organizing, empowered scrum team 
can take this as an opportunity to come up with creative initiatives, development of small tools, so that they can keep these outages to a minimum. This will ensure that we do have a releasable increment in each sprint and we are following Scrum. Problem solved. Scrum on. Awesome. Now, it's time to share my experience of using Scrum with an infra team. Let me give a better background. Our client is a world leader in HR and payroll solutions. The production services are developed by one business unit while another business unit supports and maintains them. I was involved in organization level transformation of the business unit that supports and maintains products. So all teams in the transformation were mostly infrastructure teams because there were two different BUs involved and all. They were not on to DevOps practices as well. So I was working with a database team. The first thing I did was facilitating the team to visualize the current process. So we mapped each step in the team's current process, recorded the lead and cycle times. Then we did a clean sheet design of a new process that would eliminate waste, reduce delays and introduce automation where possible. Remember, in Scrum, a development team decides how they are going to work. Then we analyze the nature of work coming to the team for the last quarter. We found that there were about 36% of requests from development teams on executing various queries on production databases. These queries are like finding out number of particular criteria meeting users or ensuring that a particular script is executed well against the database, something like this. To address these requests, the team had a scheduled downtime of about two hours. I put a thought back to the team what they can do to reduce this downtime. They came up with an idea of developing a portal that would take requests from development team members, run the requests against necessary databases, share the results back to the respective development team member all without any manual intervention. The team decided to use Scrum so that they can develop the portal and also continue their routine maintenance and support work. We presented this idea to our leadership so that everyone is aligned. Please remember, if you don't get enough support for these kind of in initiatives, it would be Game over. The team tried to figure out the best technology stack for developing the platform with just enough architecture as it is done in Scrum that we decided to go with open source technologies and they have chosen Python as a development language. But unfortunately, none of the team members knew Python. Because this team was empowered, they reached out across the organization seeking anyone who knows Python who may help them. Fortunately, they found one developer, but he was busy in his 9 to 5 with his regular project work. So the self-organizing team decided to utilize his time after office hours by staying two hours late. We started sprinting. We looked at our unplanned work in last quarter, allocated the required capacity to meet that work in sprint planning. We also dedicated some capacity to learn Python and develop the tool. The remaining capacity was marked for usual value delivery and planned work. Every day, we use a daily scrum to effectively track the team's progress about development of the tool. Impediments were raised as soon as they were identified. We were seeking help from Scrum Master and management outside the Scrum team. We leverage the minimum viable product concept and our first increment had only two features. A single sign-on login for the developers. A list of all databases correlated with the applications and business functionalities they are hosting and supporting. So we slowly started adding functionalities and in two to three sprints time, we released the first cut version which allowed developers to execute non-DDL queries against the database. We collected the feedback, made improvements and started adding more features. We effectively used sprint review to engage with our development stakeholders. 
get their feedback, incorporate that into a product backlog and really started enjoying the benefits that Scrum brings in. In about 7 to 8 sprints, we rolled out the complete tool. By this time, we were able to reduce the downtime from 2 hours to 20 minutes. That's incredible! The team continued working in Scrum and identified next area of improvement. How they can consolidate cloud instances, decommission unused ones, resulting in huge cost savings for the organization. They started building an analyzer tool using Python. You know, by the time, now, they are comfortable working in Python. So in about 4 sprints, the tool was ready. They were able to save about 60,000 US dollars for the organization. Well done! The critical elements of Scrum, self-organized, empowered, small team with clear accountabilities, regular inspect and adopt cycles, living by Scrum values, and maintaining transparency that creates trust, iterative and incremental delivery are the secret behind this success. Thank you for your time listening this far. The references used in this podcast are 1. Scrum Guide 2. Agile Alliance website for explaining Kanban method. Thank you for your time.